awfully, or not at all. Our, our opening hymn, 381. While he wills to be found, call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. And together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon us and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all good, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So together we'll say the Jubilati and the Venite, the Venite first. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into the courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the readings of the scriptures. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, starting at chapter 45, verses 3 to 11 and 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 37, 1 to 12, and 41 and 42. Our refrain is, put your trust in the Lord and do good. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not, do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, like the green grass fade away. 
Trust in the Lord and do good. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord and he shall give you your heart's desire. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in him and he will bring to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. In the Lord and to God. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently on him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while, the wicked will be no more, and you shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land, they will delight in the abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous shall come from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord will help them and rescue them. He will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them because they seek refuge in him. The psalm. The epistle reading this morning is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that it is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown to dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It has raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also spiritual body. Thus it is written. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit, but is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as in the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have been born the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. This is the word of the Lord. Our gradual hymn this morning is 458, Seek Ye First.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, but I say to you that, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you, strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to them who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Please be seated. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May my words be used to honor our Father in heaven. Turning the other cheek. <clears throat> Joseph was sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers. And now time has passed and the people of Israel are starving. There's a terrible drought. And Joseph's brothers, the very ones who sold him into slavery, are now sent by his father to go and ask the Egyptian government for assistance. So, um, um, so they went, and they're all seated there. And lo and behold, who comes out to, to dress them, to deal with them, but Joseph. Can you imagine how he must have, they must have all felt when they saw the very man that they sold into slavery, and now they're asking them to help them. Their hearts must have sunk to the floor. Think of it this way. We today, we're all sitting here in this room, and we're waiting on the person who we've come to ask us for a, a little bit of a loan. Maybe help us get a mortgage. Maybe just some money for our, our, a few groceries. Our kids are home. We have no money. In and walks the guy who we were nasty to at the grocery store on Friday. You're going to feel very vulnerable and maybe even get your backs up a little bit. But boy, you need that money. <clears throat> All you have at home is five eggs 
and half a box of cereal and no milk to go with it. Maybe the bank won't renew your mortgage because you're not working. You feel the need to grovel, or as the saying goes, you need to eat crow. But really in your heart, in your heart of hearts, you feel bad. And you've probably felt bad since last Friday for, for speaking to that person the way you did. How is he going to react? Will he come and sit down with you? Maybe he will realize now why you were so terse on Friday. Your kids need food. You need to keep a roof over their heads. Especially in these times now when rents are like... <laughs> so many people are living in their rates and all these tiny homes are going out. But that's not for you right now. You need help right now. <clears throat> Sometimes life deals us rough, rough times. Now, I believe these moments are God's teaching moments. He will never bring it upon us, but he may use it to teach us a lesson with, to help us with valuable lessons with life, to make us stronger. Just like our parents, when we goofed up, when we were a parent, we messed up as kids. Our parents didn't use it as a punishment. Well, maybe some did. But. <coughs> they will use that experience to mold us into better people. Jesus turned the other cheek many, many times during his ministry. Jesus says, Love your enemies. Pray for those who harm you. Turn the other cheek. If he steals your coat, give him your shirt also. It is our frail human nature to try to get even or to seek revenge. But Jesus asked us to look behind the action of people who, who don't treat us well. Why is this person doing this? I'm not a psychologist by any means. I'm just an ordinary Joe or Joan from the street. But I have had times where I felt very unloved and unsure I was not the nicest person to deal with. Of course, that's back a while ago. If someone wronged me, I wanted revenge. How dare they? Who do they think they are? And all the way home, you can come up with these great answers that you wish you had remembered back there. But of course, you don't. They're always hindsight, and that's 2020. And it's a good job God stayed in my tongue, really. And did I learn anything from that? Nah, too self righteous. Then, and thank God he still works in me. God has given me lessons, and in the form I would never have thought. Now I've told you all about the old gentleman went, that I ran into in a Brunswick, but for those who were in my captive audience, I will tell you again. So I went up to New Brunswick to do a block release for my apprenticeship. And I got there and I was walking down this street and looking at the restaurants because they didn't have a lot of money and I was just trying to make my best bang for my buck. And this gentleman of color came and that, that's not important. But I think I need to put it in there for some reason. It, it, it is part of the story. So he's walking towards me and he's got shoes on and they're open and he's got no socks and he's got on a pair of polyester pants that are stained and he's got this ragged coat on and his shirt's open like, you know, down to almost to his belly button. And he walks up to me and he says, excuse me, miss, do you have any change? And I thought, 
I'm not paying for your wine. And I said, no, don't. He said, God bless you, miss. And he walked on. And so I didn't really think about that until I walked further up the street and I uh, thought, well, I'll go back to that little restaurant I saw back there. Probably the cheapest. There was people in it, so the food can't be that bad. So anyway, I went back and there he was. He was eating. And so I sat down and I, the waitress came over and I said, you know, that guy just asked me for money. And I just thought it was for wine, so I didn't give him any. And I said, here he is eating. And she said, yeah, people put money here for him to pay for a bowl of soup or whatever. And so I realized the man was hungry and I said no to his hunger. So anyway, reasonably ashamed, I paid for the next one and I, I left. And I never ever saw him again. But I always remember him saying, God bless you, miss. And I, I <clears throat> oh, that's like over 30 years ago, but who can't be? I, uh, I feel today that I saw the face of God there, and I, I didn't see it. I didn't recognize it. I didn't see the need. I didn't help one of his. As time went on, the, the deeper that experience became to me, as far as I'm concerned, I met God. So out of my self-righteousness, I was taught a valuable lesson that day. And I still am taught a valuable lesson today that has never left me. Just a five-second encounter, a life-changing moment for me. I'm no St. Teresa by no means. But I do remember better to reason why people do what they do. And remember, Jesus got angry, too. He cleared the temple. Anger used in a positive manner is out, is, is okay. But it is never okay to harm. We can use our anger to advocate for people who have no house to lay down in at night, or food in their bellies, or for the mistreatment of children and animals. My mom always used to say you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. And so it is true. Even if you're angry about these social injustices, speak nice, be kind, carry God's cross. We'll get a lot more done that way than if we're all Spitting mad. The Old Testament justice speaks so differently than the New Testament, but I don't think either one was wrong. Jesus was and is all about forgiveness. But remember, it is the same God of which we speak. An eye for an eye. The king, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Do you take these statements literally? I mean, if you did, there'd be a bunch of blind, one-handed people walking around, and I'm not sure that's what he wanted. I believe Jesus wanted us to be aware of the ways that we sin and mend our ways. It's okay to look at something and admire its beauty, but it's not okay to plot how to get it to make it yours. The same as the hand. It is okay to touch a person with love, but it is not okay to use those hands to harm or strike. One will condemn us the other will help us to bring others to Christ. We're a lamp, we're Christ's lamp, everything we do and see, say. I wish I could just brush my teeth, I can't use it. Um, but it is, um, but 
the other will bring others to Christ. Vinegar and honey. There's a huge difference between the rules in the Bible and the rules of the culture of the region. <clears throat> I have something written down here, but it might be politically incorrect, so I won't say it. So in the Old Testament, they're ruled by the Pharisees and Sadducees. And uh, I think some of those rules were made by those people to control the masses. There is a time of defense and punishment, and God in his wisdom knows better than you or I. In the early centuries, our justice system was brutal. Drawn and quartered was the rule of the day, and everybody got together with a big picnic and celebration for a public hanging. Was there no one in that crowd that felt wrong about that except the accused family? When was the last public hanging in Canada? And I was going to Google that just before I left, but when was the last poor man imprisoned for stealing a loaf of bread to feed his family? Somewhere along the line, there must have been a calling from God. Hey, those are my children too. Whatever you do unto them, you do unto me. And some Christians must have been listening. There has become a shift from punishment of justice to restorative justice. It is no longer an eye for an eye, but to take this person and see why they are doing what they're doing. The most devastating feeling in the world is the feeling of worthlessness. Nobody values you. You feel you're not even worthy of love. <clears throat> Once we restore that feeling of worth, then we can feel love, the love of God. It will work for everyone in God's time. I did tell you about the first time I ever spoke in a church a few years ago. I felt so unworthy that if I, if I was asked to read. And, and I felt so unworthy that I thought God is going to strike me dead if I open my mouth and utter his words in this holy place. But he didn't, and here I am. I didn't know much about his love then. Anyway, I was brave and prayed that he wouldn't. And here I am. If you know, no one else in the world loved me today, well, that's fine, because I know God loves me. Mind you, it would be a lonely place. I'm an introvert most times, except for when I'm in church. I mean, you guys can't shut me up most times, but that's, that's meant to be, I, I suppose. God has gifted me with the, the gift of gab here. <clears throat> we are God's people. We are loved by God. So if someone is not nice to you, look at the reasons. You might not be able to fix it, but if you have nothing kind to say, be quiet. You never know where you will plant a seed of faith, and I'm a great believer in the seeds of faith. The seed may take a few years to grow, a few years to sprout, but it will never sprout if you don't plant it. So there's one place where I find it hard, as I've already told you in my, in my earlier. If someone asks me for money, and I don't know why they need it, Will they use it for items other than food? Is it my job to find out? No. Is it my job? Must I help my brother and sister? Yes. 
I can do it in a way, though, that is good. It'd be a good practice to carry a $10 fast food establishment gift card. I mean, if they sell it to get money for, for things that are not good for them, then that's between them and God. It's easy to give to those you love. We do it all the time. We shower our children, our, our family with the best that we can provide for them. Is it the same for those who are strangers? We don't love them like family, but deep in our heart, our, in, in the heart of our beings, we do love them. We wish them no harm. We want them to be happy and healthy. And that is what God wants for them as, as well and for us. Christ turned the other cheek, even unto death on the cross. Do unto others as we would have them do unto us. May we see the face of Christ in all we meet, and may all we meet see the face of Christ in us. Amen. Let us stand together as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered from the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and it is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our offertory hymn is 507. Let's be the tie that binds.
Merciful God, accept all we offer you this day. Lead us to love you with all our heart and to love all people with your perfect love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. As you are comfortable, let us pray. Let us pray for those that who have sight but are blind. Let us pray for those who can hear but will not listen. Let us speak, let us pray for those that can speak but have no wisdom. Let us draw near to the light of Christ, offering prayer and supplication on behalf of the church, the world, and one another. Let us answer God's call with, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, forgiveness is the hardest thing we ever do, but refusing to forgive is worse. Thank you for the forgiveness that you have given us in Jesus. Let us sink in and work deep within us. Although it is so hard, Teach us how to forgive and to ask for forgiveness. Restore us to yourself and to those who are separated from us by their sins or by our own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your church unflinching in exposing sin, humble in confessing it, and generous in forgiving all who repent of it. Do not let it rebrand sin as virtue, nor reject those who stumble. Make it wise in exhortation and counsel. Make it gracious in restoring and healing all who repent and turn to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless counselors, pastors, and others who help repair relationships and restore community. Equip them to listen deeply and speak wisely. Let them seek your will and model your love as they serve others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Embrace the people of this congregation with your holy and forgiving love. Make us eager to seek out those estranged from us and patient in the work of reconciliation. Let all we say and do shine with love for Jesus and with Jesus' love for everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Give rulers of nations and all in positions of authority a love for justice tempered with mercy. Remind us all that revenge may destroy both parties and strict justice may divide, not build up communities. Teach us that mercy and forgiveness, though difficult, can bring healing and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore the faith and the health of all who are burdened by suffering of body, mind, or spirit. Especially let us pray for Bill, Ruth, Siobhan, Kirsten, Diane, Nancy, Shannon. Let us also pray for Karen, Dagmar, Reverend Bill, Debbie, Evan, Jerry, Reverend Darlene, Debbie, Cheryl, Wayne, Cecil, Douglas, and Randy. And let us also raise the names of Bob, Brian, John, Lisa, Sid, and Bob. Give them the joy of your saving help and restore them to the fellowship with all who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember in our church today, in our Anglican world community, we give thanks for the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East. In our own diocese, we pray for our Bishop Sandra Fife 
and the Collieries Parish in Nova Scotia. In our Pictou County Council of Churches, we pray for St. Mary of Scotland Roman Catholic Church in Lismore. And we pray for all the Anglican churches of Pictou County and give thanks for those praying and remembering Christ Church in Stullerton, St. Bees in Westville, and St. James in Pictou. And we also remember in our prayers today our ACW prayer partner, St. Andrews in Cold Harbor, Nova Scotia. Heavenly Father, we commend our beloved that have passed into your care. Trusting your promise of mercy, keep us, we pray, in your care as well. Help us bring your mercy to those who are lost, broken, estranged, or despairing. Sustain us with your grace, one for us in death and resurrection of your Son, and given to us by your Holy Spirit. Reconcile us to yourself and to each other, and welcome us into your kingdom and reunite us with all your people. There let us praise your goodness forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these things, dear Father, and for whatever else you desire for us in your wisdom and compassion, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, Lord and King. Amen. Let us pray together the collect for today. Almighty God, your Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving love. Remember your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weaknesses sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And this brings us to a close of our service today. Um, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And, yeah. um, do you folks have any announcements on what? There's a bulletin in the AGM, ACPC and AGM. Okay, the Anglican Churches of Pictou County's annual general meeting has been again rescheduled to Tuesday, March 1st at St. Bees. This is also Shrove Tuesday. So we think that it is an opportunity to lighten up a little. We hope to have a plated, appropriately distant pancake supper at 6.30 with the meeting starting at 7. If you cannot make it but feel you want to be part of the proceedings, please arrange for someone to be your proxy. And this is deemed a non-essential meeting. Proof of vaccination is required. And so we hope to see you on Shrove Tuesday. Anything else? I had things that I wanted to say when I left the house, but <laughs> I don't know where they're at. So uh, anyway, um, it's wonderful to see you all. And uh, 
weather the storm to get out. So our closing hymn is Jesus Shall Reign Wherever the Sun 